Welcome everyone to a first look or a bit of an overview of Unity of Command 2. For those of you who are familiar or not familiar I should say with the original, Unity of Command the original is a very highly regarded war game. Typically it's cited as one of the best games to use as an entry level for people who are not really familiar with war games but like the concept. They want to find a way to get into the genre basically. A lot of times those people were recommended Unity of Command. And I think it's partly because it's part war game, part puzzle game. So it already has some common aspects, as in the puzzle aspects, that it shares with uh, you know, with things that most people are already familiar with, like Solitaire almost. Um, and I don't want to compare this to Solitaire, but there are some puzzle-like aspects which actually can be a turnoff to people who are more hardcore war gamers. So first, for this overview, I'm going to be doing the Normandy Breakout uh, mission, which I find a lot of fun. I think this is a great one. Um, a lot of people are going to be more interested with doing the campaign, which is very fair and a lot of fun as well. But this one is going to be a nice tease for us to just show how the game plays out. And it should expose a lot of the, or pretty much every concept in the game. Except for, I guess, the campaign persistent uh, units and all that, which, you know, I'm sure that there's a hundred videos of those out there already. So Normandy Breakout, let me just read the scenario and then we'll continue the game description. This is a large, the large scale attacks. This is August 1st, 1944. So just a couple months after D-Day. Large scale attacks during July by British Second Army near Kane drew in the best divisions of the German army in Normandy. This left a worn down and thin defense to face the massive American attacks of Operation Cobra. Now, as the German front line faces imminent collapse, Schaefe activates U.S. Third Army. This force, commanded by George S. Patton, is earmarked to exploit the inevitable breakout. So we have 11 turns to play this. <clears throat> um, the dispatch for us is, you have finally breached the Bocage. Schaefe has activated Patton's Third Army, and your orders are to unleash his force into the enemy's rear areas. Our supply situation is still precarious, and as such, you are free to divert forces to capture French Atlantic ports. But do not lose sight of your primary objectives. To get a decisive victory, we need 200 victory points, and a brilliant victory... We need 360. I think that's not just victory points, it's prestige. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the map. First of all, I have the hexes turned on because I'm a war gamer and that does not intimidate me. In fact, I actually find it quite pleasing to know exactly where all my different hex locations are. It's kind of basically uh, usually a trade-off between like, does it look nice? It maybe looks a little bit less nice, but I want to know exact. I want to plan ahead, so I want the um, the hex lines. And uh, there's a lot of great map modes. You can very easily just hit V to check out your supply, which we'll cover in a moment. B to check out the enemy supply. And then I think C is cards and what's the terrain? G for weather mode and T for probably for terrain. So there's a little bit of bad weather over here. And then T, we find out all the different terrain on the map. So anything that which is not, does not have a symbol is just planes. So it's just a beautiful game. The interface is lovely. I think that um, uh, one thing that I, I am a little bit perturbed by, I don't know, this is a really minor complaint, but you have to hold control when you're holding mouse wheel to scroll in and out, which is completely unnecessary. The same function for the actual scroll wheel is already uh, double mapped to spacebar. And there's just no way that spacebar is and mouse wheel need to be mapped to the same thing. So I'd much rather scroll in and out to zoom. But that's a minor thing. Pretty much that's my only complaint in a game which is, like, I mean, it's phenomenal in every other way from the interface. So um, a puzzle-like aspect I mentioned. Uh, first of all, let me just say that the main uh, difference between this and Unity of Command the original is the supply. So I already showed you supply. If I go to this mode, it'll just bring up the supply network indefinitely until I cancel this. So we can see that um, it, it does this in kind of the same way like the Gary Grigsby titles do, Advanced Tactics Gold. You have supply dumps or supply sources, and then supply moves out from these points uh, according to the cost of the terrain around it. So this one, I think, uh, level two maybe generates eight or nine movement points of supply. And if it costs two movement points to go into this forested, because if I hold T, I can't hold T, there. So this is obviously not just a 
uh, planes. So it's a slightly higher movement cost. Uh, now going back. So you can see that, there we go. So um, yeah, if I start with nine, then this one maybe takes two to go in. This one only took one and then to get here, it takes two more. So you could go seven and then you wouldn't get here like that way, you would go eight and down to six. If you went from here, this is nine down to seven. From here, it would go from seven down to five. So you can see seven down to five. And, and it just trickles out. And when it runs out of supply, when it runs out of movement points, that's as far as the supply can go. It's nice also that it shows you these numbers, seven and seven here. That means you're already having a sense for how much further the supply is going to be able to go. Especially if you just look at the terrain map mode, you'll be able to see. And um, it's always nice to see it's very natural, of course. The supply moves faster along the main thoroughways. So uh, the roads in here only count for one, but these really, let me try to zoom in. These really thick roads, railroads, actually count uh, as free movement for supply. Or at least the supply can be, you can create a supply dump anywhere along these roads. Now note, although I, I can create it anywhere, it still costs three to get over here. And that's because it's one, two, three, four. So nine minus four, so nine, eight, seven, six, five, and then two to get into here. So I go from five down to three. So although you can put a supply dump anywhere on these, it still does cost one movement to move along roads. So that gives you kind of an, over uh, an overview of how the supply works. It's pretty simple. And then you have usually a couple trucks. I have five trucks in this case that you can increase. So if I click on this one, it's at two and I have five here. If I move this up to five, I took three extra and those three were taken from here. And now you can see that the amount of movement points I have available is, well, it's just, it's been increased and uh, that's gonna allow supply to trickle a little bit further. I don't need to do that right now. We'll just leave it as, as it is. And now let's talk about um, how to actually play the game itself. Well, it's pretty straightforward. You click on a unit, left click is to attack and uh, right click is deselect. I can't make any movements right now because it's actually giving me a chance to do my pre-battle preparations. Um, this is where you can go to the headquarters and you can purchase, oh, and maybe in this, and some of the, and most of the scenarios you are not actually allowed to purchase and I think that that is the case here. Doesn't look like we are allowed to purchase any steps ahead of time, which means that our prestige, what in the campaign you can do is you can buy a little bit of uh, extra steps. Now these dots here, yellow dots, are called steps. And um, there's two states for them. You can have the step or you can have a disorganized step, which is a circle with um, that's not filled in. And we'll see that very quickly. And that means that your unit hasn't lost that strength, but the units that amount, that make up that much percentage of your force are disorganized or not combat effective at the moment. So if your unit rests, it'll gain back those. And we'll, we'll just see that as we get going here, but let me just see if there's any other steps I can buy. Now it does cost prestige, so even if I was able to do it, it would it would still be a question about whether I wanted to. And it doesn't look like we're, we have access to buy any cards. So I don't see anything we can do. We'll just go ahead and end the battle preparation. Now, by the way, I'm not an expert at this game. If you have noticed places where I'm making little mistakes, please let me know in the comments because I, I really do want to get better in the, at, at the game. And uh, I'm going to be playing the campaign probably uh, as a full Let's Play on the channel. So hopefully your comments will help me play a little bit better. Now, we can use our air recon to spot places behind the front lines. I find this just of mild use. Oops. So we didn't find anybody there. It's unusual. Nobody there. I'm pretty sure we're gonna find some people over here. Maybe not. There we go. Somebody in there. We know that there's some German armor over there. Um, I guess we'll want to find out what's over here. Okay, there's somebody guarding the uh, the Hav. The Hava. I don't know. <laughs> French is notoriously my worst pronunciation language. Eh, maybe we'll check here. So we used up all six of our recons, but we'll get them back next turn. And we also have two for air attack, which, I mean, we'll figure out where we want to attack first. 
Um, so now let me actually demonstrate an attack. Well, probably not an actual attack, but at least how it works. Let me zoom in, we're as zoomed as we can. So when I left click on my unit and I rest my cursor over the enemy, it's showing me three to zero. That means if you look on the far right over here, so looking on the far right, you can see that it's expecting me to lose three and maybe for one of them to lose one. Um, the attack loss shift is plus one because we're veterans. But I think that this unit is also veteran. So um, this is uh, the expected result, basically. It expects me to lose three and them to lose zero. Not a very good exchange. If I was to attack with this unit, which is not cross crossing a river, now it's a little bit more fair. I will get I would be able to kill one unit and probably take one unit as uh, losses. However, if I attack this unit or this unit, I'm not likely to take any losses. Now that's a prediction, and let me tell you, from experience, I know for sure, it's definitely possible to take losses still. <laughs> so, I mean, our tanks, we're expecting to do even better because they're usually better on the attack. Zero and two, so we won't lose any there. That's a pretty good sign. You can see we actually get the same zero and two out of here. So puzzle aspect, let's maybe attack with this unit here. Um, I don't see any reason to use my bomb against this guy. So we're expecting the victory. Okay, and now you can see that he did not actually get displaced, but I lost my ability to attack. And you can see my unit now has this blue bar. That means he's already used his attack up for the turn, but he still has movement points left over. Now, unfortunately, I can't do anything with that one. So I'm gonna have to attack with this one just to clear uh, this unit out. And you can see that this unit has the not filled in, it means it's has one strength left, but that strength is already disorganized. So we expect this unit is just gonna die, and it did. Now with this unit, I can move in. However, if I do that, and this is the puzzle aspect, nobody else can move in there and attack. There's no ability to swap units. So this tank, which is already attacked, is occupying the hex. Thankfully, the which is no longer at the front line, but uh, it's essentially occupying something near the front, which means that nobody else can occupy that hex. You have a stacking limit of one, and a lot of the game, unfortunately, I think, but you know, as I said, this is more like puzzle mechanics, so probably easier for other people to get used to. Um, you have to kind of figure out who to attack with what first, and then how do I move that person off the front if they didn't, if they aren't able to advance in order to get another unit to the front to attack again. And the main reason why I don't like that is because I don't think that that's part of real war. Um, there's not a mechanic where like, I mean, I was talking to the THG, the historical gamer about this, and he was saying, well, you know, actually, you know, in the Civil War, they had to maneuver lines and all that. But I can't imagine a situation in like, any point in World War II where you needed to pull people off the front to get somebody else to the front. And it was like, actually, you couldn't figure out a place to put them behind your front lines. I can't imagine that. <laughs> so, I mean, most of the time in World War II, the front was just stacked. You would just, you would put more people on the front. <laughs> or you wouldn't want to put too many people on the front because you want some reserve forces, but it wasn't that you, it's not that you couldn't find room for them on the front. It's just that you wanted, you know, defense in depth of some sense, I and mean, in some sense. Or you wanted to rest some troops. So anyway, it's a very not realistic uh, view of war, in my opinion. And I'm not an expert. So just remember that. I'm not an expert on this, and feel free to come. Correct me on anything you'd like in the comments. Uh, now we're getting a zero to three here, which means this is a very powerful attack. And that's because we have very powerful armor here. So let's do that attack. And basically that was a huge success. And what's even better is he, my unit here, our second US armored CCA. Um, this one actually has not used up all of its attack points. And I don't understand exactly what goes into whether they're able to attack twice or not. So I'm not gonna to pretend to know, but he's able to attack again. And that means, obviously, it's very good. The reason why he can't move in here is because he, um, being able to attack again, it would violate his zone of control. We can't move in here and then attack. So we can either do a zero one, we might be able to move someone else, like this unit can move all the way forward, but let's see if a tank can, see, we can get this tank to move all the way forward and attack this three, or to even attack this tank. Probably it's better to attack the tank just because that one, um, yeah, so this is the only one I think which will be able to get all the way forward like that. Okay, so we're really pushing hard. 
We can either do the 0, 3, which is pretty powerful, or this 0, 2. I kind of want to, I, I, as with all the war games I play, I will over min max everything. I will just to the umpteenth degree overthink every possibility. And that's certainly not going to be any different in this game. So we know that we have a bit of a river problem here. Um, this is a pretty well defended. Let's see how are we doing one on one. Now we do have some. The uh, each um, HQ has some points. So we have eight points in the first. Is it eight for all of them? Eight for the second? I think six for one of them. I thought no eight. Yeah, eight for all of them here. I think that can change, but for now, at least in this scenario, all of our HQs have eight command points, and that gives us points to do stuff like suppress a fire, no retreat, faint attack, set piece attack, rear guard. We can also repair bridges or even create pontoon bridges. Now creating the pontoon bridges is pretty important because it's going to allow us to move forward. And one of the big problems which they hinted at in the, um, in the scenario description is supply. When I hold V and I get my supply overview, you can see these hexes all have a little red bar. The amount that this red bar is filled is the percentage chance that that hex will not propagate supply. Which means that if supply does not have another way around, if for example this one triggered and there's a unit here, no supply would get to this other unit. So obviously <laughs> this is not normal. Normally the hexes have like maybe just a smidge but this is intentional in this map. It's kind of like the Americans, the Allied forces, uh, big thing that they're coping with is bad, bad supply. So we do have to be a little bit careful about that. And it's not dependent on how, um, on your uh, supply dumps. So increasing the number of the supply dump does not push supply through a region where supply simply won't flow. We do have our two air attacks left. So let's just look at this. Following shifts apply to air attack results. Minus one if weather is mud or snow. Minus one if target is a mountain, fort of, is a mountain, fort, or city. Minus one if the target is entrenched or fortified. And plus one if target the unit is green. So we want to try to use this against somebody where it's going to be very effective. I think that this might be our candidate here. Now we can do something like with the did you already attack I think you must have already attacked oh I think I moved this unit this is the unit that probably attacked down here and then moved up to clear space no they attacked here but didn't move forward okay so we only have one unit who can attack two zero so we might want to do suppressive fire on this unit which is you know going to be very effective. Let me just make sure we're not going to... Yeah, I think this is the best thing to do. Let's do... Well, let's actually do suppressive fire. Let's try to take this unit out. Yeah, then we can box off that guy and just completely eliminate that force. Um, or, if we're really bold, we can try to do... I don't think we're going to be able to cut off more than one person, and it's not really that important to cut them off. Just breaking them is going to be enough that they one or not, they won't um, any longer be entrenched. It's going to be a big benefit. So there's no river here. Looks like there's no river here. So surprisingly, this guy across the river can almost <laughs> is almost as effective as this unit not across the river. But Taylor, this guy's a 25 pounder. So that you can get one attachment to your units. I think we're going to do the suppressive fire. Is this, this is our, no, no artillery here. This is artillery. Okay, so we're going to do our suppressive fire from this unit because that is plus three artillery on this one. And it, you know, it removed two dots, which is good. Now what we'll probably find, try to find a way of doing is getting that unit out. Now you can see we're going to get zero and two. This is much better. Hopefully this unit just leaves. Get the hell out of there. No. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be effective. So we need one of these guys to get out of the way. <laughs> so this is the puzzle aspect. We did not succeed in our attack. And we, we need people to push forward to create spots for people to move to get out of the way so somebody else can come in here and finish the job. It's all complicated. So let me do this. 
four zero. That's not good, but that's probably the perfect opportunity for us to do. So if we do a set piece attack, this will remove their entrenchment. Feint attack. This just inflicts one support uh, suppression on the attacker. Mm. We have plus three artillery. Let's do that one. Very nice. And oof, still no good here. <laughs> um, hmm. Four zero, you say? There's like no good scenarios for this guy. I guess we could use artillery here. I mean, it's it's kind of nice to use the artillery because. Have you moved yet? You have. We just need to find a way to get somebody out of here. I'm stuck. I've done it to myself. Well, let's try to do this. Let's just bomb this guy twice. Okay, we got one extra thing. It's possible we can win. No. <laughs> we did. I mean, we won. He's down to no points, which means next turn we shouldn't have any problems breaking out. But this turn, unfortunately, we're SOL. Crap out of luck. And so our Canadian army, I think we're going to have to I'm gonna pan this over without actually attacking. Suppressive fire. I think suppressive fire is still the best thing to do. We can do a set piece attack to remove people's entrenchment next turn. Okay, wow, that was not very good. Even though he has, uh, yeah, he has a 17 pounder, which is more anti-tank. Okay, so who's left? We still have the, oh, oh. Okay, so this is not bad, we can do this. We did take one point of damage. He can attack even again, oh my god. <gasps> he can move, it happened, it's a miracle. So this movement is gonna allow everyone, everything to shift. I think I might wanna move this guy. As, I mean, this is, this is very important. The puzzle is real. I'm gonna move this guy because I don't know. Yeah, I think this is just, it makes more sense. Um, the reason why is, now this guy can come in fresh, but more importantly, we can shuffle everyone to the left and get some new someone new to the front. So zero, oh, zero and three, we might be able to break this guy. So it just depends on where we wanna take our chances. I think, honestly, I think our best point of attack is going to be across this river because this unit now has no pips left. No steps as they're called. Or they have all their strength of steps, but they are um, they are completely disorganized. So I imagine any kind of attack is going to destroy them. Okay, this is 0, 2. What about you? 0, 3. I think a 0, 3 is what I want. So we're going to do some movement here. Some This is like, you know, when you have those 4x4 four four grids of things and you have 15 squares in it and only one square is open, and you have to shuffle everything around to make the picture complete. That's what we have to do here. And like I said, not everyone's cup of tea. This is just not what everyone thinks is enjoyable. But I think we're going to go ahead and do it. Okay, you move here. You move here. And you can do zero three. 3 Yeah, I think this is the one we want. Okay, let's do it. Yes! Oh, it worked. And we took prisoners. Now, prisoners prisoners are a whole nother thing. I think it'll say we have prisoners. So one, when we get another set of prisoners in our HQ, that will reveal for us some intelligence. Usually it just shows you some locations of stuff. Uh, but the best thing about this is, this has opened up another possibility for us to attack as our tank has now freed this one spot. So I can probably move up here. Let's see, who do we want to attack? Four zero. I think I want this guy to move up so that you can move in. Four zero. Uh, do you have any movement left? Oh, you can move, but you can't. Well, if you can't move, then it doesn't, it's kind of a moot point. 
We might want to move everyone back right. <laughs> oh, you can you can get over here. That might be the best thing because I want my armor to be able to break through next turn. But on top of that, I don't really need my I don't want him here anymore because he's not gonna be able to do anything. Okay, so let's do this. Let's have this guy move over here. Uh, that's one to one. This is one to one. And you've already moved. So oh, you can move back here. Okay, great. So we can get other people in here to suppress and then move back. Um, you have no armor. You have M10 Rangers. Uh, no, I'm just looking for people with artillery. Who still have attack points left. Like you, but you can't move out of zone of control. We still have our points left. Remember, we can use those for bridges too, but... I think we just might do the attack here. Lots of good options. So I don't know, I mean this this is already hopefully giving you an idea about whether or not you like this game and I'm just way too slow at playing this. We should speed up. But this is again that it's the whole puzzle system, which you know just is in my opinion meant or at least going to drive you mad. Can you get no you can't. So who's here? Artillery, that sounds good. Let's go over here. And let's use our artillery, which we don't have any points for. For some reason we can't do it, but we'll feint an attack on this group. Wait, we can't? Oh, we can only feint attack here, which I guess suppresses one more point. That doesn't seem that necessary. We can pull these guys off the front though. Okay, so let's do it. So let's do a feint attack here. And it, they did get one point suppressed as well, but that was to be expected. We'll move this guy forward, back. Move this guy forward. Zero and three. After all that work, we're going to push this guy out after all. So we it took one disrupted, but he took a lot of damage. Move this guy in. Mostly just because we want to clear the way for someone else to come up. And do some suppressive fire, which we cannot actually do. Okay. Um, let's make sure that we're taking the ones from the right headquarters. So where's your headquarters? Oh yeah, this is still the correct headquarters. Okay, so we could move up infantry. I think it's gonna be, I mean, infantry is good at defense too. We could probably move this one up. Next turn, we could do suppressive attack with it. And then um, after that, we can move him back. So we'll do this. And that means that we actually wanna leave a space for this guy, someplace where he can go, retreat back to. So we'll probably leave that space open. Otherwise, in, you know, in theory, I would want to move all my forces forward. So we still have some people who haven't attacked. I have eight points too. So I'm thinking what I could do is something like this. I could do suppressive attack here. Holy cow, it didn't do anything. But he can move back, thank goodness. <laughs> so we get somebody else in there. And this guy will also not do anything because he can't. Okay, so let's just attack here so we push these guys out of the forest. Ah, he didn't. He survived. <laughs> it's, it's getting difficult. <laughs> Hard to find a place to move. So we need somebody to take this out. Okay, we'll move here. Do a faint attack just to reduce them a little bit. Oh, one-on-one. -on -one. Well, he's cut off, so I guess we don't need to worry about it too much. He's gonna die on his own eventually. Oh, we can also do an attack here. Let's do that. Huh, I wonder why we can't do anything. We do have artillery. Are we only allowed a certain number of these? Order a unit to attack using its artillery only. This unit takes little or no losses. Requirements, unit not green or weak, weak or green. They're not, they're veterans. Um, unit must be in supply, I think they are. And active RD specialist. Well, this is artillery plus three, so I just, I think it's a special specialist. Okay, so I think we're gonna have to do, unfortunately, the attack here which we did take one full damage, but now we can do this. Ah, uh, I don't know, probably not worth it. 
But that's okay. We're learning. Oh, you. Oh, I guess we can just kill this guy now. And now I do want you to move. You can't. <laughs> no. Okay, you can move. Let's do that. Let's move. And then move this guy up. This guy can't move because of zone control. Tank. Can't make it. He can't move. <laughs> Alright, well we can uh, we can attack this guy. That might help. Who do we want to attack more? Let's attack this guy. Ooh, we did take it. See, you know, it's, you can't, it's not a guarantee. I think we're good. Because unless this guy can move, this guy, nope, they can't, neither can move. This guy can't move. I mean, I guess he could move back. But we can't do any more attacks or anything. Not sure exactly why. So let's go ahead and look at pontoon bridges that we might want, like right there, right there. Sounds okay. We'll take one right here. And we'll go to our next. Just get pontoon bridges from everyone, because I think we more or less have run out of points. So let's just get a whole bunch of pontoon bridges, which is going to help us advance the front. You're done, and you're done, and you have six. Okay, some more pontoon bridges, please. Yes, and yes, and I think yes here. There we go. Okay, so that's going to complete our turn. <laughs> We've done one turn in 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, no, it's actually not because we want to move somebody forward. Oh, God. Anybody. Somebody? Anybody? Bueller? 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 Oh, we really can't move anyone forward. Jeez. This guy can move forward. We don't want to move him too much to the west because his headquarters lies on the east, but but at the same time, <laughs> if we don't, where else are they going to go? Let's just keep them separated appropriately. Where's your headquarters? Oh, it's all the way over here. Okay, so well, will this unit just move here along the road. Won't be able to get them anywhere, unfortunately, this turn. Ah, you can move forward to here. Probably worth it. And we'll get this guy to move forward a little bit. Again, we should be saving spaces for people. Let's move this one here. But, I don't know. Let's just, uh... <laughs> I think this is good enough. Okay, so let's end the turn. And now the AI gets a chance, obviously. Most of the, what the Germans want to do is fighting defense, though. Probably don't want to do too much attacking. And it does not look like they are. So this guy just fortified. So you, they move. the first thing they do is get entrenched, and then after that, they can get uh, fortified. So that's what we're looking at. When they have the bricks, the shovel is bad, but the bricks is worse, far worse. And here we go, we have a lot of new <laughs> forces moving in. Okay, there's somebody there. Now there's anything here, now, here. Here we know there's probably somebody. Um, we know there's somebody there, so let's check here. Two more. Let's check here. And I think the last thing we want to check is one of these things. Let's check here. So we have a good idea of what's behind the front. Which uh, doesn't look like there's too much, actually. Now, the armor is mostly moved to reinforce the west. They don't want us to take St. Malo, I guess. But I think we're going to be able to push out anyway. And this is the most important thing for us. We can capture the German supply point, even. Remember, if we hold B... Remember, I'm speaking to myself. But the you can see that this is what the supply normally looks like. It's normally pretty good. There's just a specific penalty. You can see almost all of our units. The red, uh, small red explanation mark means they were out of supply. Now you get one turn like that and you're okay. But two turns and you take penalties and every turn after that you take additional penalties. So it's definitely something you want to avoid. Now we have two bombing runs. These are less effective against units which are entrenched. We're probably going to have to roll a dice here. I mean it's a 0-3. This unit only has three. So... That would be the easiest way to break out, but if we would attack this unit, 
we might be able to push them across the river, which is what I want. However, we'll push this unit back for sure, so we've got to take the sure thing. And we don't have to advance. Interesting. Oh, this unit can attack again. No, 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 it can't. Sorry, I misread that. Zero and two. Actually, that's a really good. That's a really good start. Unfortunately, yeah, even hitting spacebar. So you can't hit spacebar. Like I said, this is also the mouse wheel. To just say, I don't even want to use my combat. I want to convert my potential combat into extra movement points. However, even like that, because of the zone of control, we're not able to go further than this hex. Um, so I think we do want to push forward here then. And probably what we're going to do is like a suppression, suppressive fire on this guy. He needs to get pushed out of the way so that zone of control stops hurting us. That only did one damage, unfortunately. Even that's only one to one. And we could cross, and that would help us do one to two. I think that might be worth doing. This is a pretty good attack, zero and one. Uh, the most important thing is for us to clear, to get these railways though. So let's do this. I think that was absolutely worth it. That was brutal. Very effective. So you can move, but why would we have you move when we can have... Oh boy, yeah, the situation's not good here. We might want to use our bomber here. That was very effective. Now you will get still only one to one. If we move this guy, oh, he already used his turn. I don't know if this guy will be able to move out if he moves in. Ah, well, this guy can move backwards. Probably don't need to move all the way back there. Um, two and zero, that's not what I want. Oh, and two. This is good. Let's do this. Because I'm pretty sure even if he doesn't succeed, he can move back out of there. And they moved back. Hooray. And they left two prisoners here. Again, they already... I, oh, I thought we already captured prisoners with this one. But this should be enough to unlock supply for... um Some, sorry, prisoners for us. And what's even better is we're going to be able to move all the way across and take their supply. And that gives us supply. I mean, so anybody in range of this supply has just been given supply. So you can see all the red exclamation marks in this hat and this uh, side all disappeared, which is wonderful. And this is just going to give us a lot of opportunities, open up a lot of possibilities. Mm. Hmm. The thinking game goes on. So I really want to make sure this is an overview and that we get you know beyond just the first or second term. So I, I probably won't be able to, but what I will be able to do is at least put my concluding thoughts. I think what you've seen in this already is is enough, and I'll probably just put a cut in the video here and we'll continue this. But if you're not really interested in looking at more, if you're saying, hey, Tortuga, you just play way too damn slow. First of all, yeah, I know, I understand. Normally when I play these games like Advanced Tactics Gold, I'll actually plan out my entire turn ahead of time and then start recording, which I haven't done for this one. Probably a mistake. But if you're, and maybe I can do that moving forward, but if you're interested in seeing more, I will continue to play out more of the Normandy Breakout in the next episode. But for now, if that's enough for you and you have an idea of whether you like the game, I still, if I might, entice you to press the like button just because this is the first video in the series. I'd greatly appreciate that. And uh, there's a lot of other people making very good Unity of Command 2 content, I'm sure. Uh, campaign is the, probably the most interesting thing. And I, like I said, I plan to do that in the future. So we welcome these kind of games. We welcome more games like this. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until the next one, thanks for watching and take care.